Hey you guys, happy Friday. I hope your weekend is almost starting. <laughs> Hopefully I am actually ready for the weekend. It is noon, I have my wine glass here. Now granted, I'm not actually drinking wine just yet. Probably later on today, my mom is visiting from New Jersey where I grew up. Um, but right now I actually have in my wine glass, I have some, what am I drinking? Like a coconut, LaCroix, I love all things coconut. Those of you who know me, you come to my fridge. I've got like lots of coconut stuff. Um, a coconut LaCroix, um, some mint, and then I put a little bit of coconut water in there for a little bit of sweetness. Um, so super delish, super tropical. Um, I live here in South Florida, so it kind of just matches our vibe. Um, but I hope you're off to a great Friday. I'm excited to deliver today's topic to you, how to burn calories outside of the gym. And so um, I know a lot of people, yes, you, you work out, you burn lots of calories in the gym, um, but the truth is you don't have to spend tons and tons and tons of time exercising you know and i am a trainer i am very much an advocate for exercise i myself you know i'm in the gym or i work out you know five days a week just about um so i definitely encourage fitness but i don't want people to assume that you know being in the gym is the only way to get activity to burn calories and to be successful on your health and weight loss journey and so today i'm going to talk to you about some ways to burn calories outside of the gym i'm going to talk about some really important concepts for you um, in terms of adding some um, new habits to your lifestyle and understanding how your body works um, and hopefully this will be of tremendous value so go ahead and comment below if you're watching me live if you're listening to the replay or you're watching the replay give me a hashtag replay um, and again at the end of today's talk for some extra accountability I want you to drop a comment with your big takeaway um, from today's talk what your one action step is going to be moving forward I always say education without accountability is useless right so I want to make sure that you're not just listening but you're also processing this information and what you're actually going to do with it once this talk is over all right so let's go ahead and jump right into this party so what I want to talk to you guys about today and a lot of my CMW clients you know I use this term all the time um, I want to talk to you about something called neat okay and no I'm not discussing an adjective like you're a neat person or something is neat um, I'm talking about something called non exercise activity thermogenesis now, those of you who have been in fitness for a while or you have a trainer, they might have dropped this term. If your trainer hasn't used this term with you, now you're learning it. It's a very important term. It's something I always share with my clients. Um, NEAT, again, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So exercise, for example, is typically what we would consider like working out in the gym, right? Maybe you're taking a cycle class or you're doing a a group fitness workout or you're doing a weight training workout at home, right? Um, but not, but neat is something different. So for example, it could be walking, right? Just taking your dog for a walk. It could be doing some gardening in your backyard. It could be running errands. Um, it could be pacing around your house when you're on a phone call, right? Or maybe you can be like moving a little bit um, while you're watching TV. Um, it could be parking farther away from the store, right, in the parking lot, right? It could be taking stairs instead of the elevator. So these are all little ways that we can increase movement throughout the day, right? Without breaking a huge sweat, without changing our clothes, without doing much thinking about it. These are just like little habits we can create. Sometimes it can be like a, a mental health break at work. Like you go for a little five minute lap around your building, right? Or around your floor. Um, so it's just, and I'll give more examples later on in our talk, but um, it's a way to accumulate steps, right? So I know a lot of people like to have step goals, whether it's on their Apple watch or on their, or on their whatever fitness watch, I should say, or maybe you count your steps on your phone, um, you know, that, that, or you have a movement goal that you want to hit, right? And so NEAT is always working towards that goal. Okay, and I'm very, very big on neat, right? In CMW, we call ourselves neat freaks, okay? Because it is truly a game changer. And I can't tell you guys, men and women I've worked with, and if you're one of them watching, go ahead and comment below, who have told me I work out five, six days a week, I'm in the gym for an hour, or I'm doing all these things, and I'm really still not seeing transformation in my body. Okay. Um, and, and sometimes it is like changing up their fitness routine a thousand percent. Maybe they're not doing the right kind of workouts or um, they're not really maximizing their muscles. You know, there's, there's, they're not doing the right kinds of things, like I said. Um, but oftentimes what I find 
it's more of they're not moving much else besides uh, the workouts that they're doing, right? So it's like they're doing a workout for maybe 30 minutes to an hour and then they're just sitting the rest of the day, right? And so that's the problem because meat is not only important for your caloric burn over the course of the day, um, it's also important for your metabolism as well. It's also really important for your digestion too, okay? Um, and meat is, you know, super important for really like tuning your engine, okay? So for example, like the food you eat is your fuel right and then exercise is a way to keep your engine moving you know properly um, and i use this whole car analogy in my program to talk about it are you like the beat up volkswagen are you the lamborghini are you like the the lexus right um, those are my, my clients that i'm talking about but um you know what meat really does is it helps us optimize how our body operates Okay, and how we process food and how we um, you know, uh, metabolize calories. And it's also really good for just overall like mental health break, right? So a lot of my clients know like one of their motivators for getting out and going for a walk um, is it's a great like mental health break, you know, taking a step away from work um, or something stressful in their life, they'll just kind of take a, a break. And there's two ways to deal with emotions, right guys? So we create space from them or we sit in them, right? And sometimes people will choose to sit in a stressful situ situation and sometimes they'll eat, sometimes they'll bite their nails, sometimes they'll do something. Um, and then other times, you know, just going for a walk, right? Taking some time away um, will be helpful. Um, so that's, you know, one of the benefits of me, it will increase your, you know, caloric burn, but also, and, and will help put you in a caloric deficit. Yes, yes, which is what you need for weight loss, but also, you know, it's good for mental health as well. Okay, also guys, like getting outside is really important. I know like the weather is getting nicer in other parts of the country. Um, and so it, this is a great opportunity to really increase your needs, your movements. Um, and, and the weekend's coming up, guys. Like I always tell my clients, like weekend meat is really important because over the weekend we tend to eat more or eat more calorically dense foods. Maybe we're having some alcoholic beverages, whatever. This is not alcohol, reminder. <laughs> Um, but you, you know, this is a great opportunity for you to, you know, burn extra calories and get that, get those weekend walks with your family or your friends, right? Um, instead of meeting up for happy hour, maybe go for a walk and then go to happy hour or don't go, whatever it is, right? So just finding a way to increase your overall movement is going to be a game changer. And I've had clients in the past where, you know, they it was a weekly call and they were like, I did really well with my nutrition and I hit all my workouts, you know, and I did this, this and this, other goals we talked about, but you know, they didn't lose as much weight as they wanted to. And I was like, well, what did your meat look like? And they're like, ooh, I kind of slacked this week because of whatever, you know. Um, and then guess what? Once they got back on that meat train, they were back to losing the weight that they wanted to. So um, I do want to emphasize um, the way, the, the importance of meat, okay? Um, and something else too that I personally, that motivates me to get out and go for walks. Um, I have a dog too, so that's really helpful. Uh, but, you know, I do find, and this is actually you know, scientifically proven that walking and movement stimulates creativity. Okay. So if we're like mentally stuck, like we're, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're doing some content creation for our jobs or we have to, you know, answer emails or whatever, like going for a walk and doing it, um, or doing it after you go for a long walk can really increase your productivity and your creativity. Okay, how many of you have ever noticed like when you're running or when you're walking that you think of some really cool things? Like you get a lot of your, um, you have some aha moments or I've had people tell me this all the time. Like I was a runner for a long time and a lot of my runner friends would say that they did their best thinking and reflecting when they were out running, you know? Um, so it's true that, you know, walking and movement in general increases your creativity and, and really kind of, um, gets the brain moving. So another, you know, benefit of meat. So it's not just about weight loss. And I hope to make that very clear. I know a lot of you guys are not here just for weight loss, but you really want to be a healthier, happier, less stressed out person in general. Um, and so meat is truly a game changer. And there does, there is not a day that goes by that I don't talk about the importance of meat, that I don't get my walks out. Um, and even if the weather is cold, like I have clients that would be like in the north, you know, in Chicago in the winter, you know, or upstate New York, and it's 
10 degrees outside, right? And, you know, oftentimes they'll still bundle up and, and get out for a walk or they'll move around their, their house, you know. Um, and I'll talk about some more ways to incorporate me here in a minute. But I, I do want to emphasize that, guys, that although workouts are great and they are going to help you get results, especially like if you want to, you know, build lean muscle mass and, and tone up, um, working out, strength training is absolutely imperative to your success. Absolutely. I can't deny that. But um, it doesn't mean that the, the neat and like the walking and these things that seem so inconsequential, it seems really small. Um, it doesn't mean it's not important. This is actually, I, I tell clients this and sometimes they don't believe me, but I'm serious. Sometimes I believe that the neat is just as, if not more important for your health and weight loss journey than workouts are. Okay, because a lot of you guys know, like, yes, and there's probably people in this group here who have proven that you can lose weight without tons of exercise or with no exercise. Comment in the chat if that's you. You've maybe recently or in years past, you've lost weight, um, it may be substantial weight, 10, 20, 30 pounds or more with very little to no working out. I, I've heard it, I've seen it, totally doable. Maybe you didn't tone up, you probably didn't tone up, right? I'm gonna just assume that probably, and although I shouldn't make assumptions, like I can't understand how you would tone up without exercise, um, but uh, you don't need the fitness to lose weight. Okay, especially like if you are weight training, right? You are strength training, I want, same thing. Um, you might actually, it might slow down your scale weight loss progress. Your body tr uh, transformation will happen. You will see a difference in your legs, your arms, your midsection, uh, your face probably, but the number on the scale might be different um, or move more slowly because the um, muscle weighs more than fat, right? Um, but anyway, workouts are important, but the NEAT is a way to keep your body moving, to keep your body moving, keep your metabolism going, keep your digestive system active. Therefore, you're better metabolizing your calories and you overall are burning more calories throughout the day. Okay, and so that's the game changer, I'm telling you. So those of you who maybe travel a lot or you know, you're really succumb to your your home office a lot and you you know don't get to the gym as much as you want to, I don't want you to stress about that. Um, and that's one of the biggest things we do in CMW is we really try to make this weight loss journey as stress-free and sustainable as possible. So I never want someone to feel guilty if they can't hit all their workouts or maybe they don't hit any workouts. We have people in CMW that don't even work out. Like literally all they're doing is going for walks, okay? And they're still successful and they're still losing weight and, and they're happy. And then they're working towards working out because yes, especially as we age, guys, strength training is imperative for your health and longevity. Okay, it's not just a weight loss thing, right? Um, I never want fitness to be a means to an end for weight loss. That's not the way to look at movement. Movement is something you have to do to be a healthy person, period, right? The American Heart, um, what is it, the AHA, uh, recommends, what, 150 minutes of activity. That's 30 minutes, five days a week. That's like bare minimum just to be healthy. That has nothing to do with weight loss, okay? So if you're not hitting that mark, what I'm talking about today will help you do that, okay? 30 minutes, and that's actually the number I use with CMW clients is you wanna aim for 30 minutes of movement every single day, okay? Um, and I, I always say like it as needs, right? If you do a workout, that's bonus, that's extra, but the neat 30 minutes of neat every day, and I'm gonna give you examples again of neat what this can look like for you, um, and it doesn't have to be 30 minutes of uninterrupted, like straight 30 minutes. It could be 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here. That's what I like to do, um, breaking it up. Cause I know it's sometimes hard to find that 30 set, that 30 minute chunk. But, um, I want to give you guys five, my five favorite ways to incorporate meat into your day. Okay, and I, you know, I'm a busy entrepreneur. Um, I have meetings. I'm on Zoom all day long. Um, I so I get it. You know, like being back to back meetings. Well, how do I fit this in? And a lot of times, people like assume that they don't have the time. But I find that you'll make the time for things that matter. So I want to show you some easy ways to sneak in that meat. Just like I teach people how to sneak in veggies and sneak in fiber, uh, sneak in protein. Uh, whatever it is, sneaking in healthy things, more sleep, <laughs> um, more self-care. I want to help you sneak in some meat, 
All right, so write this down or remember this somehow, this is important. Um, I mentioned this earlier, number one, parking farther away from the store you're going to or walking instead of Ubering or driving. Okay, so you if you live in a city, right? And I know Abby, you guys see her posting in the group sometimes. I know, you know when, when she lives in DC, uh, she lives in Silver Springs now, but when she lived in DC, you know, she would Uber a lot of places. And then, you know, once she started CMW, she started walking more places. And that was a big game changer for her. Neat was a huge game changer for her on her weight loss journey. And she talks a lot about it. So um, taking walking instead of Ubering. Um, and I get this question to you guys about like biking. Like, well, is biking better than walking? So I honestly, and I've talked to lots of trainers about this because this is something we laugh about, but I definitely would say walking is better because walking, you're going to actually use more muscles, you're using more of your core, um, and it's just like a more natural movement. Like if you're biking, you're still sitting, you're not using your glutes. Um, you know, I, so I think walking is great. Now, if it's a long distance, <laughs> you know, that you're going, like obviously a bike ride might be more practical. Um, but you know, if a leisurely, if you're debating between like a leisurely bike ride, um, and a walk, like which is going to burn more calories. I, I don't think the biking is going to be it, you know, but just do what you, but do what you enjoy. You know, I'm not saying don't go for a bike ride. I have a beach cruiser. I like to go for bike rides. They're fun. Um, but you know, walking is don't underestimate the power of walking, please, please, please. Um, so parking further away from your car or, or far, farther away from a store. So when I go to, you know, the grocery store, I'll park further away, usually cause there's more spots anyway, and I'm a terrible parker. So I'll park there and then walk, um, or, um, you know, don't Uber as much. Number one, number two, easy way to incorporate meats is a walk and talk. Okay. So as you guys know, I'm a talker. I could be here all day talking to you guys. I actually do walk and talks with clients as well. So meaning instead of me sitting on my couch um, or in my office and doing a phone call, I can go walk outside and talk to someone on the phone, whether it be a client or my family member, my friends. Um, so that's a great way, again, to you know simulate the brain, increase productivity and creativity um, and to multitask. You know, you're killing two birds with one stone you know, me talking to my mom on my couch versus walking outside, there's no difference, right? And I, incorp and I encourage her to do walk and talks too, right? So sometimes if I have clients that are a little bit more like, I don't wanna say adverse, that's the wrong word, but like, you know, they're still getting on the neat train. I'll be like, all right, we're gonna do a walk and talk today. So we're gonna catch up about your week. We're gonna celebrate your wins. We'll talk about any obstacles you have. We'll do goal setting together. I'll answer questions you have. We'll do it on a walk, you know, um, and they like that. You know, that's been a game changer for some people I've worked with and getting them into that habit of walking. So walk and talks are another great way to get more neat in your day, okay? And so think like, can you do a, a phone call with a client or can you do a meeting on your phone and go walk outside and do it or walk around your house, okay? You can pace around your house and do it. If it's raining outside or it's like bitter cold or, or whatever, you know, just can't get outside. You don't live in an area where it's like super great to walk in. Um, you know, can you pace around your house? Like, how can you keep moving? Okay. Number three is multitasking. So this is something I like to do. So for example, like I'm, I have to create content for my business, you know, for Instagram, Facebook. Um, and I find that when I'm walking and doing it, I'm way more creative and I get all these great ideas. So I'll go for a walk outside and I'll like be writing content. I'll be writing an email. I'll be, um, you know, taking pictures for a reel or I'll be planning out some posts or um, I'll be working on some a new curriculum for CMW. I'll be posting things in my CMW group. Um, I'll be sharing things with clients. Um, brainstorming you know new things whatever maybe i'll be doing some research maybe i'll be looking up some new products um and i can do it all from my cell phone you guys know we can do so many things on our cell phone right you can answer emails um why not you can go stroll through instagram go do it on a walk okay and if you don't want to go outside maybe you've got a treadmill in your house or you got a gym in your building or close by go walk on the treadmill and do things on your phone do all the things you would do sitting at your desk, go do it on your phone, okay? And that might sound like crazy to you. It might sound like, wait, that sounds ridiculous. I can't, I can't do that, right? Try it out, just try it once. And maybe start with something really simple. Like maybe instead of sitting and listening to an audio book or reading, you're doing it while you're walking. 
or listening to a podcast. Okay, I know a lot of people like listening to podcasts. They, they say they want to do more of it. Uh, do it while you're walking. So again, like NEAT is not supposed to be an additional task in your day. I want to make that very clear. And this is a game changer in terms of changing your mindset about walking um, and just movement in general. It's not supposed to be an additional thing. It's supposed to just enhance and supplement your day. So it really is like multitasking. So while, you know, I got to go take my dog for a walk, you know, and he needs a solid walk so he gets his energy out, I'm going to do the same thing for me. Killing two birds with one stone. I got to answer these emails. I got to go call my mom. I might as well go walk and do it. I'm killing two birds with one stone, right? It's multitasking. It's not adding something to my day. Comment, I understand. Neat is not additional work. Neat is enhancing my, neat is a habit, right? Neat is enhancing my life. It's not adding to it. Does that make sense? I hope. That's how we have to look at it. This is why I always say mindset matters. 80% of your success on your health and weight loss journey is mindset and 20% food and fitness. I say this all the time, but I'm sticking to it. And those of you who have been successful, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So number one, park farther away and Uber or and don't Uber as much and drive, walk more. Number two, walk and talk. Number three is multitasking. Okay. Number four, after eating or after meal walks. So walking after you eat is a great habit. And there's this great strategy called habit stacking that we use to create new habits. So after I finish a meal, all right, after I have lunch or after I have dinner, I go for a walk, okay? Because like I was saying before, that's going to help with digestion. It's also going to help with you overeating, right? So if you finish a meal, eat that meal nice and slowly, don't rush it, right? It's a whole nother conversation. So eat that meal and then get up and go for a walk. Even if it's five, 10 minutes, I'm not saying you gotta go walk for 30 minutes, but go walk for a little bit. I guarantee you, you are less likely to eat more food, right? Because you have got, you've created space from the, the food and you've taken your mind away from it. And you're going out there and you're starting to digest and you're giving your brain uh, a chance to understand that you're full, right? For your stomach to catch up to your brain. So walking after you eat is another game changer. It will help you eat less food and it will help you digest the food that you have eaten and it will help you on the weight loss journey and your health journey. You have gut issues, digestive issues. You better go walk after you eat. Sitting after eating, especially like a really big meal is no bueno at all, okay? So number that's one of my favorite ways to incorporate meat. All right, and last but not least, guys, number five, my top five ways to incorporate meat into your day easily, I call them brain breaks, okay? So all of us, the, you know, especially in the working population, you know, if we're on Zoom all day or we're on calls or whatever, you know, it's really important to give yourself a brain break, right? Because how can you perform at your highest level, you know, be productive and clear-headed if you don't give your, bot, your brain a chance to take a little break? Okay, so I know, for example, like I tend to schedule myself out from like 10.30 to 3.30 every day, right? But at 3.30, I like to go for a walk, okay? So like that's a little brain break for me. That's usually when I walk my dog too. So um, it's a little time for me to kind of take a break from like my sessions or whatever I'm working on behind the scenes in CMW. Um, and then after my brain break, I go back to work, right? So a brain break, like I said, it could be going outside for a walk. It could be walking around your office building. It could just be like listening to music and walking around, but it could be some people do like my five minute movement routine. They do some squats or they do some like, um, whatever they do, they march in place or just some kind of movement. So I call it a brain break, um, but you can call it a movement break, whatever it is, put it in your calendar, plan for it, okay? Because if we're starting to create a new habit, guys, it's not usually gonna happen unless we one habit stack it. So attach it to something you're already doing. So for example, eating and then going for a walk, that's habit stacking right? Or every time you um, wash dishes, you drink a glass of water for people who really struggle with water intake. Wash dishes, drink water. Okay. In between meetings, you drink a glass of water. 
right? Something like that. Like it's just a, 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 an attachment to something you're already doing naturally. Um, but for like walking, sometimes we have to plan for it. So I guess I have my busy clients plan their walks. And that might sound silly, um, but if that's what you have to do to get started, then so be it. Okay, you got it. If it's, if it's important to you, you'll do it, right? All right, so what I want to do at this point is I want you guys to comment below with which way will you incorporate more neat this week, okay? And I gave you five. Let me give you one more. I just thought of this, actually. Um, those of you who like to watch Netflix or like, you know, um, watch something with your family. Sometimes, like, this might sound so silly, but, like, I've had people, especially in the dead of winter, when they're not getting outside as much as possible, um, they'll, like, you know, stand up, march in place, uh, you know, when they're watching something on TV. And I'm not saying you need to, like, watch something on TV and march for an hour or something. That's, that, I'm not telling you to do that, but... Um, just even for a few minutes, you know, or, or I've had clients like walk on their treadmill and watch a, an episode of like the Real Housewives, <laughs> you know, um, do what you gotta do. Um, but I'm telling you, this is such a game changer. I would not be spending 30 plus minutes talking about me with you guys here today, Friday, May 13th, Friday 13th, oh my gosh, um, if it weren't that important for your success. This is one of the tricks, tips, biggest tips I can give you in terms of being successful on this journey without spending hours and hours in the gym. And I like the gym, but I'm telling you need is way more important. Okay? Is this helpful for you guys? Comment with your big takeaway. Okay, well... That's it for me for today. I hope this served you. I know a lot of you guys are going to watch the replay if you're watching it. Um, oh, there's Thurston. <laughs> Thurston. You can't do 10,000 steps in 30 minutes. No, that's, yes, you're very right about that. But if you do 30 minutes, that will contribute to your 10,000 steps, right? Um, and guys, let me, let's talk about that for a second. So yes, like people, I will recommend doing, you know, 10,000 steps in a day. That's definitely like a, a great goal. And a lot of our clients go over that. And not all of them do that. Some people start at like five or 6,000 steps a day and they work their way up. I think that's another great opportunity for you, opportunity for growth. So let's say you are someone that you just start tracking your steps. You're like, oh, wow, I'm only at like three or 4,000. Don't get down on yourself. That's totally okay. But what I would do is say, okay, my goal this week is to get to 6K steps. Okay, once you hit 6K steps consistently for a week, all right, I'm gonna bump it to 7K now, right? And then hit it consistently. Don't keep bumping up these goals unless you hit them. That's silly, right? Or don't shoot for 10K every day, hit five, and say, I'm gonna just like keep trying and then especially if you have this all or nothing mindset where like you're like 10k or nothing right um, i'm all about like small progressions small changes leading to big results so but thurston back to your thing uh how many steps can you get in 30 minutes now it depends how fast you walk it depends on a number of things but typically you should be able to get like a few thousand steps in a 30 minute walk absolutely i would say maybe 2k i know like guys like in one of my workout classes in my like full body Friday, for example, we did today, I can get 2,500 steps for sure. And yes, your workouts do contribute to your need, to your goal, to your step goal for sure. Uh, but again, I still want to encourage like that 30 minutes of walking or something throughout the day. Okay. All right, what else? Let me see. Habit stack, walk after eating. Good! Yes, Rebecca, I love it. I'm a big fan of habit stacking. Um, Sheila, hey girl! My rock stepper was a godsend this winter. It's behind the couch and I walked on it during TV shows and movies. Yes! How oh, good! I love it. Oh my god, Sheila, you have been rocking and rolling 30 pounds down. Her cholesterol is lower. Oh, Sheila, I just love watching your journey. Um, it's been so fun watching you grow. Well, shrink actually, but grow in other ways, right? Um, so yeah, I actually I had um, this this couple I worked with, um, Philip and Nicholas. They lived in Minnesota, 
super freaking cold. And I remember um, Phil got this, uh, this, what was it? It was like a little tiny walking pad. And he would walk on this walking pad as he like watched TV. Um, and he loved it. He lost 20 pounds, you know, and that was his goal. And he was like this and he didn't, oh, and that's actually another thing. Phil was one of those people that did not want to exercise. And I do have clients like this sometimes, guys, that like don't want to work out. They're like, well, I want to lose weight, but like I just want to really focus on nutrition. I'm willing to walk more, do yoga, but like I'm not really into weight training. And like I like to meet people where they're at. I think it's really important that no matter whoever you choose to work with in the future, if you do get a coach one day, you find someone who's willing to meet you where you are, but they're also going to push you. Right. So I challenge Phil in other ways. Right. And I told him, I was like, listen, man, you want to tone up? We got to get some weights in here. But he was like, I'll get there. And that's fine. And he was still very successful. Um, and yeah, I remember him with the walking pad. Um, and then his partner had a Peloton that he really liked. And Phil had no interest in the Peloton at all. And he was like, I don't want that. I wanted to do my little walking thing. I was like, okay, cool. He was successful. Okay, so everyone's journey can look different. I think that's also really important to understand about the health and weight loss journey. And that's why I'm so proud of CMW and I love our program so much is because everyone we work with is very different. Okay, how they exercise, how they eat, how they think, how they move, how they um, just do their day to day business, how they live their life. Everyone's so freaking different. And so every, and, and nothing should be cookie cutter, right? And so that's what I encourage you guys to do is to do something that like works for you. And if you're looking for help with understanding how to eat in a way that, that supports your goals and your body, how to exercise in a way that supports your goals and exercise in a way that you enjoy exercising, right? So Nick liked the Peloton, Phil wanted no part of it. Right, uh, Sheila likes my workouts. So, and then Thurston, he likes going to the gym. He likes to run. I remember that Thurston. So, you know, working out in a way that supports your goals. Um, how to change your thinking about yourself and about your weight loss journey, about your discipline, about your motivation, about your confidence, about your recipe for success. Right. So, changing your mindset is super important too. Okay. And, and I'll tell you what, guys, like, I know I just talked about meat for the last 30 minutes, 32 minutes to be exact. Um, and a lot of times people still don't wrap their head around it. They're still not motivated to go for a walk. They know how beneficial meat is. They hear me talking about it a hundred times a day, but they're just like, oh, Kristen, like it is just, you know, windy out. It's gloomy. It's just, I don't feel like I've had a really long day. I deserve to rest. Right. So how to break out of that thought process because that is going to hold them back from their success. Okay. And getting accountability. You know, if you need some accountability to go for walks, I will literally have clients, Krista, right? Are you, I don't know if you're watching this, but Krista, she is um, a mental health counselor at Yale University in New Haven. And um, she will literally text me after she does her neat walks, right? Uh, and it's because that, that's her accountability. So, um, I, you know, just having that extra support, I think is super important. So if you're looking for that support, that guidance, that clarity, that fire under your butt, so you finally get these results you're looking for, you want to build this healthy lifestyle and you want to be able to sustain something for the rest of your life. Okay. If you're looking for that, you want the consistency, you want those habits. You don't want to talk about them. You want to be about them, right? So if you want that support. Schedule a call with us, createmyweight.com forward slash apply. Okay. Um, and this is a game changer. I'm telling you right now, NEAT is a game changer. And yes, NEAT is part of our program, uh, but there's lots of other things that we do to help you succeed on this journey. Um, but yeah, NEAT's one of my favorite things. <laughs> so if there's one thing you learned today. It's get out and get moving, especially with the weekend coming. Okay. Glad. I'm glad there's some big takeaways from today. Awesome. Comment with your takeaways. All right. All right, guys. And then write down below, actually, another thing. How are you going to move more this weekend? What's one way you'll get more movement in? My mom's coming to visit here real soon. I'm going to make her walk with me. <laughs> um, yeah. And if she wants to go out to dinner, we'll go for a walk before or after. Okay. Little things. It's just it's the little things that add up. I promise you. 
All right, guys. Much love. Happy Friday. I will be back another week to do another training. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.